The Pit Bull Great Champion in Combat, the famous White Rock of Tudor. I didn't have the opportunity to see White Rock, but he was one of the dogs responsible for naming the legendary Dibois. He was just another one of the bone-crushing dogs that Dibois had. And he was probably the best in skill. When I was in the army in the South region, I made many lasting friendships, especially that of B.O.B. B. Wallace. As I was young, I was always asking, which were the best dogs he had ever seen. And now I see the same thing happening to me. At the time I felt frustrated, because the veterans couldn't answer, which was the best dog they had ever seen. And now, I find myself in a similar situation. I can even name some dogs, but it will certainly be difficult to name a group of them. At that time, whenever I asked these veterans, the list was varied, but White Rock has always been in a high position on this list. To give a note to all this, I had seen Bouncer, Debois's father, in Phoenix this in 1950. They rolled it while I was at Howard Hainzel's house. It was owned by S. W. Hubbard, an influential sophisticated from Phoenix. Hubbard owned a nightclub and he had money to buy good dogs. He bought Big Boy from Bert Klaus, and he got Gimp and Joe Curvino from Curvino. Gimp was Bouncer's father. Bouncer was crossed with one of Howard Hainzel's bitches, named Bambi, and so Debois was born. He was sold to a boy who wanted a collie. Debois had big ears and the boy called him Dumbo. When the dog grew up, the boy was still complaining about not getting his collie. A man went down to a kennel and rescued a collie, which he exchanged with the boy for Dumbo, which somehow the dog ended up calling Debois. When Howard Hines registered him, he used that name. The dog men of the time always pronounced the name of Dibwa, and the newcomers referred to them as Debo, I suppose because of the Spanish influence. Anyway, Debo was crossed with many females, in the hand of Howard Hainzel. Not all of them were good bitches. When I met Howard, he was still grumbling about this dog, who was half of the staff, who was White Rock's mother. In the late 1950s, when all this happened, these dogs were not as far from the APBT as they are now. It was just the show version of the pit bull, and I think the same, it couldn't be said now. There were more crosses, between these two races, that happened at that time. However, it is certainly a fact that one of the best dogs of all time was born to a half-blooded mother. This was almost a page of the book Bar Sinister, in which the canine hero, a fighting dog, but a bull terrier, was presented for being raised by a black and tan mother terrier. The sinister bar was a bar in a coat of arms, which signaled illegitimacy. One reason why White Rock is a footnote to the history of our dogs today is that it has never been crossed in this country. One of his fights took place in Cuba. That's when Baptista was in power. Most Cubans were poor and the rich had practically all the money there. Some of them were in love with dogs. One of them, Damaso Bibo Gonaga, a lawyer, invested $850 to buy White Rock, which was the same as a King's Rescue in 1958. When White Rock arrived in Miami, he accused positive for heartworm disease. Mr. Bebo treated this dog and tested him in a fight twice while he was there. White Rock was crossed with many bitches, and some of the puppies were good, from what I heard. Around that same time, there was another great dog, Sadler's Rebel. He was in the same weight class as White Rock. Bebo bought a sister of his for Rebel, her name was Mildred, he gave her to Sadler, she cost $250. When she was crossed with White Rock, 
she produced a dog known as Rollo. Rollo was a dog, better than his father and proved it in the Cuban ring. This is ironic, because one of the reasons why White Rock was sold was that everyone believed that he would never produce good dogs, because of half the blood, but his genes apparently fell well. Even though he sold White Rock, his owner keeps a picture of him to this day. In fact, it was the only photo of him, of a big bulldog. I suppose that seeing only one photo, White Rock, was not a bad choice. Some of the stories about White Rock will help illustrate the great dog he was. One of his fights happened in Howard Hainzel's ring, the same ring I had seen Debois' father being tested. Howard told me that the owner of White Rock let him go for a walk. A boy, only 14 or 16 years old, came back running terrified, because White Rock had fought with a great German shepherd, and White Rock had killed him. The boy was afraid of his father, since the dog would fight and could not have a scratch before the fight. And there certainly shouldn't be any extra exercise. White Rock was red because of the blood that covered it. Howard and the boy washed the White Rock and dried it. They found out that there was no brand on it. The German Shepherd couldn't hit a single bite. And this big white dog won the fight with little difficulty. Any effort he had put into killing the big dog had no effect on him. One of White Rock's fights was against the great Bert Klaus, a genius with dogs, he was able to evaluate a dog and condition them. He was also an excellent manipulator and a great referee, with the only failure in arbitration. As he was an Amman giant, he tended to obscure the view of the spectators. Anyway, Jimmy Wimberly and Bert Klaus agreed to fight with 21 kilos. Both dogs weighed 21 kilos at the time of the fight. Both dogs were washed and taken to their corners. Under the command of the referee, the dogs were released, the owner of White Rock bet with Bert, that his dog would kill his in 15 minutes. It is rare that a dog can kill another in such a short time, so Bert accepted the bet. In Bert's opinion, his dog had better in the first five minutes. When White Rock finally got into his dog's chest, he hurt him a lot this first time. His dog didn't find anything else after that, the fight was with White Rock. After just a few minutes of observation, Bert said, how about cancelling the bet, and I pick up my dog now. Bert realized that there were women and children present. In addition, it made no sense to lose your dog just for a bet, even if it was doubtful, that White Rock could kill your dog so fast. In 21 minutes of fighting, Bert's dog was standing still, and there was no chance for him to win. He took the dog and gave up the fight to White Rock. He asked for a courtesy scratch and his dog made a good scratch. The point is that Bert, with a real eye for the capabilities of a dog, recognized very quickly that White Rock would end up killing his dog, even if it took a little more than 15 minutes. Bert's dog ended up dying a few hours later. Bert said he heard several reasons why he didn't win, and he said the reason he didn't win was that I didn't have enough dog. Although White Rock was a driving chest dog, he had the ability to bite anywhere. The only thing a dog man ever said about White Rock was that it was not known if he was a dog that had gameness, because of his mother. But almost all of them agreed that they would like to own this dog, that they could keep it, and that they would have enough time to find out. Although none of us can have white rock dogs, it's worth remembering him. He was such a big dog, that he made everyone who saw him list him as one of the biggest, even if it was done reluctantly. Side note, the blood of white rock, can be found in the lineages of the ruffian teams.